Hi everyone, my name is Mishur Shiva and I'm here with the Kansas City Public Schools and this is Science for 5th and 6th grade. In our next five episodes, we will be talking about four Earth's spheres. Four major parts of the Earth work together as a complex system. On a global scale, each part can be thought as a, a sphere um, shape and size like our planet. So the four parts are called the geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. I'm standing outside and you can find um, examples of each sphere around me. And today we're going to learn about hydrosphere. A hydrosphere is a total amount of water on our planet. The hydrosphere including water which is on the surface, underground, and in the atmosphere. Okay, after this episode guys, you will be able to describe and graph amount and percentage of salt water and fresh water in various reservoirs to provide evidence about distribution of water on our planet. Let's get started. Names for all four Earth's spheres have Greek roots, describing what they are made of. Hydro comes from Greek hydro, which is means uh, water. You've probably seen this in other words that have to do with the water, like hydrate or fire hydrant. So hydrosphere is made up of water. Ice, rain, oceans, rivers, and lakes are all part of the hydrosphere. Think about water you use every day when you pour a glass of water, add ice, even when you breathe. The fact that water exists on the Earth as a liquid, solid, and gas forms is a one of the unique properties of water. It makes water extremely useful here on the Earth. One of the reasons you can find water on the Earth in all three stages is narrow temperature range between freezing and boiling points. Under standard condition, pure water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Indeed, without the water, our planet would be completely different from what we know. You already know that we, humans, can survive without water. Water is all around you. You drink it, you wash in it, you play in it. Water is through your body. About 70% of your body is water. Water not only important to humans, but all life on Earth. The ocean streams, rivers, and lakes are full of activity and provide habitats for many organisms within and around them. Water molecules are attracted to other polar molecules together with cohesion. This allows for the capillary action that pulls water upward with the narrow tubes inside plant stems. Water moves by this method from the ground to the leaves where the photosynthesis occurs. Animals use water to move nutrients and waste through their bodies. Humans can survive for weeks without food, but for only a few days without water. How much of the water on the Earth is, is actually a fresh water? Let's find out. Okay, let's talk about where can you find water on the Earth. Many people call Earth the water planet. 70% of the Earth is covered by the water and only a small portion is available for human to use. Of the old total water supply, 97% is located in the oceans. This is salt water. So we have just a 3% for fresh water left. Three quarter of that fresh water is frozen in glaciers. And less than 1% of the Earth's total water supply available for human use 
and much of it lies underneath Earth's surface. Next, uh, we begin our examination of Earth's water reservoirs, um, and we start with the oceans. Ocean water is plentiful on the Earth, but it is salty and not good for human use. You would have to remove the salt if you wanted to use ocean water uh, for drinking, bathing, or irrigating crops. Unfortunately, removing salt from ocean water usually isn't practical. Glaciers are common on the Earth's polar regions. For example, large areas of Greenland and Antarctica are covered by the ice. These ice sheets lock up a large percentage of Earth's fresh water. Ice accounts for just more than 2% of the total fresh water on the Earth, but that is 77% of the planet's fresh water supply. Um, it was proposition of using ships to tow large pieces of polar ice to places that need a fresh water. Uh, it is an uh, expensive proposition, and just imagine danger if ice sheet breaks up in commercial shipping lines. Our next uh, water reservoirs we're going to talk about um, underground water. You might have wondered what happened to rain after its falls. Um, if you leave a bucket outside in a rainstorm, it can be a full quickly with the water. Where does the water that lands uh, the ground, where does it go? Some of it runs off and flows into streams and some evaporates. A large amount uh, soaks into the ground. Water that is held under the ground in the layers of rock and sediment is called ground water. The part of the groundwater that is held within an openings in the soil is called soil water. It keeps plants and crops alive. Groundwater also includes underground streams. Uh, people in houses that get their water from wells are a drinking groundwater. The uh, water is purified as it is slowly uh, permeates through the layers of sediment and rocks. However, it's uh, um, if groundwater becomes polluted, it can be very difficult to clean it up. And we are moving on to aquifers. An aquifer is a layer of rock or sediment that has enough well-connected openings to allow groundwater to flow through it. Water collects in uh, open space between uh, rock particles. This water flows through um, slowly from one um, open space to another at the rate of a few meters per hour. That's how slow it is slowly it moves. Sometimes um, aquifers are um, used to supply water to uh, towns and farms. Uh, the water is pumped uh, to Earth's surface through a well. Uh, sometimes Earth's surface deeps below the level where the ground uh, water would be. Uh, this is where natural natural lakes and rivers are located. You already have learned about groundwater. Uh, the water at the Earth's surface is called surface water. It is found in the streams, rivers, ponds, lakes, and reservoirs. Uh, this is water you can easily uh, see and use. The next place where you can find the water is the atmosphere. Water vapor in Earth's atmosphere has uh, many important roles. For example, clouds need to be formed uh, since water vapor is a source of precipitation. 
we will be talking about interaction between atmosphere and hydrosphere uh, more in our next video but right now let's go ahead and move on to um, our graph so we're going to create very quickly um, a graph about amount and percentage of salt water and fresh water in various reservoirs on our planet For, based on our data, we're going to use a bar graph uh, to represent distribution of Earth's water um, on our planet. So we're going to, to take uh, just the four numbers, um, oceans, uh, glaciers, uh, groundwater, and uh, freshwater lakes, and on y-axis, I'm going to put a uh, total supply of the water in a percentage and on x-axis um, it's going to be a location of the water and I also will include the key which will identify which color is um, oceans, glaciers, uh, groundwater and freshwater lakes and of course please don't, please don't forget your labels on uh, y -ax and, um, x axis and uh, the title for sure distribution of the earth's water all right let's go ahead and summarize our lesson today we have learned about hydrosphere now you know that the hydrosphere is a total amount of water on our planet also you can describe and graph amount and percentage of salt water and fresh water in various reservoirs uh, to provide evidence about the distribution of water on our planet, on the Earth. And we used a bar graph to represent this information. And this is all what I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye now.